Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1304. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1303 to 1306 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Excel Magic Trick 1302, we saw how to list text modes in a single cell using all of these functions. And here was our formula. We used text join a brand new Excel 2016 function, hlookup mo.multiple and the match function to list from this data set the items that occur most frequently. And since there was a tie between OK and bad, two are listed. Now, this is a great formula. And in fact, it only has, if you look up in the formula bar, one, two, three, four different functions all put together to get the job done. But as we saw last video, those curly brackets mean that we had to enter this formula with a special keystroke control shift enter. So we want to see how to create a formula that will do the same thing, but this formula will not require control shift enter. And at the formula's heart will be this amazing formula construction. We'll use the n function, the if function, a true or a one for true, and the array. Now the array part of this is what we used last time, mode and match. And I'm actually going to copy this, because that is the part that's going to give index function trouble. Now, I have never seen this amazing construction. And luckily, we hang out on an awesome Excel online team. Bill Sizzes and Excel Larium posted a comment below Excel Magic 1302 about this formula and Excel Larium posted this link about this amazing blog that talks about this formula element. Now, this formula element, n, f, true or one, and the array allows us to get a function to return multiple items that would not ordinarily return multiple items, such as index and vlookup when you try to do a function argument array operation in the lookup value. Now, we're going to see an example of the index function in this video. Now, remember, our goal is to get OK, which is in the 1, 2, 3rd position, and bad, which is in the 5th position. So if we remind ourselves equals, and I'm going to Control V because I have the mo.multiple match construction. Remember, F9, that gives us the relative position of the two items we want, Control Z. So what we would like to do is simply use the lookup function index. And in the array, I'm going to highlight the entire list, Control Shift down or Control Backspace. There's the array, comma, and there are the row numbers, 3 and 5. But index just flat out has trouble with this. If I highlight this in F9, oh, it's only delivering the first item. And that's what this blog says. That's normally what happens when we try to get index to deliver multiple items, Control Z. Well, we have two functions we're going to have to use, n and f. Now, n is well known for doing things like dereferencing arrays that don't work inside of subtotal function. And so my inclination would be simply to use the n function. And you can read the n function. n function converts non-number values, that means like text values or text numbers, to numbers, dates to serial numbers, trues to 1, and anything else 0. So n usually works if we simply wrap it around. And I've never seen a good explanation of why this works. But many of us have used the n function like this for years. So if I actually come here and hit click row numbers in F9, you can see it's delivering the same thing. But we're going to rely on n's magic to now instruct index to deliver multiple items. But when I F9, still the same thing. So this is where we have to get even more crazy. We put the if, and the logical test, you can type out true or put a 1 or any non-zero number. And then the value of true is just going to be that. And so after the mode.mult, I close parentheses on the if. And now if we click inside the value in F9, it doesn't look any different to us, Control Z. Not only that, but we, if we look at the N in F9, it still doesn't look any different, Control Z. But here's the mystery of some parts of Excel. When I highlight in F9 everything, you got to be kidding me. It is totally forcing index to deliver an array of items. Now, I like to know the whys of how and why this is working. 
But I messed around with it. I read this article. I did some research. I can't figure out the whys. If anyone knows the whys, please post in the comment section. But for now, we're just going to leave this little construction here as flat out magic, or as this blog article says, tautological magic. And so now we are ready. We have our array of OK and bad. So I put it inside of text join, the delimiter. Double quotes, comma, space, double quotes, comma, I want true for ignore empty cells or leave it omitted and it will assume true. So I put a comma and I come to the end, close parentheses, and now I don't have to use control shift enter. That is working. No curly brackets up in the formula bar. If I change this great to good, totally dynamic, control Z. All right, so I love hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Bill Sizz's Excelarium and this amazing blog here. Hey, next couple videos, we're going to try some other tricks with this NIF1 and array. All right, we'll see you next video.